welcome the most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica. Good morning, everyone. What an impressive group. I agree with Minister Tufton that I would have liked to see this group in another place. Impressive. And as Minister Tufton pointed out, it's standing room only. I would make another comment that in arriving here, I noticed a very long line of motor vehicles parked along the roadside. Uh, and that does say something about the health sector. <laughs> Minister, Permanent Secretary, Theodore Roosevelt, former President of the United States, once said, the best executive is the one who has sense enough to pick good men to do what he wants done and the self-restraint enough to keep from meddling with them while they do what it is they have to do. And as I reflected on that statement, I thought of myself. I selected Minister Tufton as the Minister of Health, and he has done an amazing job. And the permanent secretary doesn't know the entire story behind his selection. And uh, he did serve as a director under our late Minister of Labor and Social Security, Shahini Robinson. And uh, she was very impressed with his service. Now, the permanent secretary and myself, we go back some ways, but were not close in those days. We were in school together. We, we, indeed, we were in a master's class together. Uh, so I, I knew him from then and his capabilities. Uh, and uh, when it became time for consideration of the next crop of permanent secretary, he came highly recommended by the cabinet secretary at the time. And when it became time to select where we should place him, uh, our dear former minister, Shaheen, late Shaheen Robinson, really wanted him to be the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. But there was just something in me that said, you know, we need to reinforce health. Because at that time, I, I, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health was leaving as well. And so I, I made a decision to, to put you in health, to direct your efforts there. And I thought it was a good decision because shortly thereafter, there came COVID. And I believe the minister, the permanent secretary, the chief medical officer, and the entire team at the Ministry of Health all worked very hard to keep Jamaica safe during that period of time. And I want to publicly commend the team at the Ministry of Health. You know, there, there are some ministries that you have to pay close attention to. Uh, the Ministry of Health is not one of them. I, I leave it really up to the minister and his team because they are very responsive. Uh, they set their plans. We support, but we know that there is a very high level of competence in the ministry. And so I just thought I would share that with this, with this group uh, to, to say that, you know, Jamaica has great talent.
because we have great talent, we have exported talent to the world. I, I give you, maybe it's inappropriate to make this reference, but whatever. I visited the United States a, a couple of years ago to meet with the Vice President of the United States, and we were talking about the relationship between Jamaica and the United States, uh, and I made the point that Jamaica is a net exporter of talent. And of course, uh, she was sitting across the table from me, uh, and then she proceeded to respond, and then she realized the effect of the statement, that yes, she has Jamaican connections. And we, are, we have continually done that, export talent to the world. We are exporting our Minister of Finance. <laughs> and international bodies actually lobby me quite regularly, asking me if, if I were to tap one of your ministers for a position, what would be your thoughts? And we have had uh, other ministers being asked, maybe not convenient at the time. So Jamaican talent is being observed and demanded right across the world. And because we have a deep talent pool, you know, sometimes the talent we have decides that uh, maybe it's time I go and do something else. And so I'm paying close attention that our permanent secretary is going off to further straighten his capabilities. And I wish you all the best as you take study leave. Uh, so the next time that we see you in an official capacity, it will be Dr. Permanent Secretary. <laughs> you know, study to show thyself approved. Keep upgrading yourself. Keep current. Study because you want better pay? Yes? Yes? yes. But study because you want to give better service. How about that one? Yes. Study because you want to get more knowledge. How about that one? Yes. Yeah, so I too, whilst I'm in this job, recognize that I have to keep studying and keep on the edge of information, on the cutting edge of information, if I'm going to be able to give the best service. So, in a sense, permanent secretary, I wasn't able to take study leave. But I studied while I worked. And, um, yes, I have gone on to do some uh, doctoral studies as well. Yes, so... More on that or none. I want to acknowledge our special guest, Mrs. Yvonne Wint. Please acknowledge her. And of course, you, the awardees of the Dr. Barry Wint Memorial Scholarship Program. It is a profound honor to be here today. This scholarship program is named in memory of a man who dedicated his life to the advancement of health care. At the age of 40, Dr. Wint was appointed Chief Medical Officer, becoming the youngest person ever to hold this position. His career in health spanned 30 years, during which he made significant contributions to the development of Jamaica's healthcare system. We are 
gathered to honor the legacy of this servant, this great servant. We also celebrate the accomplishments of our scholarship recipients and by extension, the dedication of our healthcare workers across the island. Today, I speak to both the seasoned healthcare professionals who continue to serve with dedication and the young upcoming professionals who are about to embark on this noble journey. It is crucial that we understand the challenges of our healthcare system and these challenges we have faced for many years. But it is also important to understand what we are doing to correct them. Your role, whether in practice or as students, is vital in driving the transformation needed to build a stronger, more resilient health system. When this administration assumed office in 2016, Jamaica's healthcare system faced numerous challenges. Decades of underinvestment had left our hospitals and health centers in a state of disrepair. Our healthcare professionals overworked and under-resourced, and our citizens struggling to access the care they deserved. It was clear that urgent action was needed to reverse the years of neglect and build a healthcare system capable of meeting the needs of every Jamaica. Our government, your government, embarked on a mission to transform healthcare in Jamaica. We understood that the issues plaguing the health sector were the result of systemic challenges and neglect that had accumulated over the past 40 years. However, we also knew that with strategic steps and bold investments, we could create a healthcare system that Jamaicans could be proud of, a system that not only addresses the needs of today, but is also prepared to meet the challenges of the future. By managing our resources wisely, we have been able to increase the health budget, pay attention to this, by 140% between 2016-27 budget and the 2024-2025 budget. This significant increase has allowed us to fund capital investments in healthcare infrastructure, increase the staff complement across the sector, and expand the delivery of medication and healthcare services to the public. Today, just look around Jamaica. We are making history by renovating and building four hospitals simultaneously. This has never happened before. These hospitals are designed to meet international standards, and we will be equipping them with state-of-the-art technology. They represent not only a commitment to improving healthcare access, but also a dedication to providing the best possible environment for patient care and recovery, including our lovely Dr. Barks. Additionally, these improvements and expansion will address long-standing problems, problems such as bed shortages at our nation's hospitals, ensuring that more Jamaicans can receive timely and effective care when they need it. Our primary health care centers, which are the first point of contact for many Jamaicans, were in dire need of attention. We undertook a nationwide renovation program addressing these facilities from the Anato Bay Health Center in the east 
to the Hopewell Health Center in the west, from Spalling, from the Spalling Health Center in the south, to the Retreat Health Center in the north. People now take pride in going to their health centers in their communities, knowing that they will receive a better quality of care. While physical infrastructure is critical, we must also recognize that no healthcare system can function without a strong, dedicated, and well supported workforce. The issue of migration has long been a challenge for Jamaica's healthcare system. It is a global phenomenon. And like many other countries, some of our skilled healthcare professionals seek opportunities abroad. Jamaica has been and will continue to be a net exporter of talent to the world. From the construction of the Panama Canal to the rebuilding of European cities after World War II, and now in contemporary times, teachers, nurses, doctors, professors, Jamaica continues to provide talent to the world. We are now at a time, however, where Jamaica needs all its talent. Uh, the historical driver for the migration of our talent was the fact that we were not able to absorb all the talent we produce locally. But what has changed? What has changed is that since our independence, you now have a government that is laser-like focused on developing the country's economy. Loyal viewers and subscribers, honorable people, give thanks for your support to the avenue. Know that I appreciate you sincerely. New viewers, welcome on board. Know that your presence is appre appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel and help us reach a thousand subscribers. Thank you. United we win.